Rivian Automotive has an estimated stock market value of a whopping $90 billion. Or at least they did as we recorded this. They're ranked as one of the most valuable auto companies in the world, and last year, their R1T pickup was named Motor Trend's Truck of the Year. That's a whole lot of guacamole for a company that has delivered less than 500 vehicles in their entire history. But what Rivian lacks in tangible numbers, they make up for in sky-high upside. Today on Wheelhouse, we're asking a couple of simple questions. What's so great about this truck? How have they dethroned the big three? And will Rivian's bullish beginning result in them becoming the next powerhouse in the EV industry? We're gonna find out. Thank you to Dr. Squatch for sponsoring today's video. Like most of you, I've been using the same soap brand since high school. Sure, it irritates my skin, has a overpowering scent to hide all those harsh ingredients, and yeah, after showering, it leaves me smelling like nothing. But who cares, right? I'm just a guy. Hey there. You're not just a guy, guy. You're a sweaty, stinky, high-performance machine that deserves the high-performance hygiene of Dr. Squat. <sighs> Wood barrel bourbon. Nice. If you think that's nice, wait till you see what's inside. Inside? Jerry, I don't understand. Welcome to the inside of Dr. Squatch's natural nourishing bar soap. Nothing but plants, minerals, and other natural ingredients. Go ahead, breathe it in. Alpine sage, cedar citrus, it all smells so good. And it's good for your body. Watch out, don't hit your head on that experiment. Unlike that big box soap you've been using, Dr. Squatch doesn't cut corners with harsh chemicals. They want you feeling fresh, energized, and moisturized with the finest ingredients Mother Nature has to offer. Really? Whoa! You're right, all natural Jerry. My body does deserve high performance hygiene. We'll start feeling and smelling your best today by going to DrSquatch.com or click the link below. Plus, new customers can save 20% off when you use code DSQDONUT at checkout. Mm. Smells like someone else is using cheap soap. Sorry, Nolan. Duty calls. Man, Jerry gets to do all the cool ads. As you very well may have noticed, a seemingly out of nowhere EV company called Rivian has been dominating automotive, stock market, and tech headlines, particularly within the last few months as they built up to their massively successful IPO last November. The reason for their dramatic descent is, of course, due to the fact that the electrical vehicle market is absolutely on fuego and only getting hotter. Investors around the world are salivating at the idea of catching an early ride on the next Tesla. Case in point, Toyota, Volkswagen, and Daimler, the three most valuable industry veterans, have a combined market value of $505 billion, while Tesla's alone is more than twice that figure. And combined with Rivian and other white-hot newcomer Lucid, these top three EV companies are worth $1.3 trillion. But how is Rivian even in the same conversation as these giants? Obviously, every new EV maker is going to be compared to Mr. Musk. So rather than playing traditional catch-up, Rivian's RJ Scarange found a niche in the market where Tesla doesn't already dominate. What's unique about Rivian's EV approach is that they've kept their initial focus solely on electric SUVs and pickup trucks. Scaringe's decision to forego a sedan model led to Rivian essentially leapfrogging everyone to become the first EV truck on the market. Super smart. I razzed them about their lack of deliveries earlier, but that's gonna change in 2022. Aside from supply chain and production snags that have delayed roughly a thousand cars, Rivian said total reservations for its electric R1T pickup and R1S SUV increased from 55,000 in November to 71,000 as of December 15th. An average price of $70,000 per car makes the total value of the pre-orders around $5 billion. And since being named Motor Trend's Truck of the Year, that number is probably gonna spike again. Time will tell if they can keep up with demand, but you can be sure that Rivian is doing everything they can to crank these pups out as fast as possible. They're chomping at the bit to get their recently announced $5 billion plant in Georgia online because they know that when the far more cash and manufacturing rich legacy brands make the EV transition, their fleets will be massive. I see you 2022 GMC Hummer. Speaking of legacy big boys, you don't become one of the most hyped EV companies in the world overnight. Scarange has spent the last 12 years developing his product, experimenting with everything from dune buggies to supercars and has managed to hitch his wagon to a couple major power players along the way. 
Jeff Bezos' middle name is Preston. We feel very compelled to remind you of this fact. And he has his sticky fingers all over Rivian, who is under contract to produce 100,000 electric delivery vans for Amazon by 2030. This massive order was a condition of Space Cowboy's investment in the company, of which he owns a cool 20%. You may have even seen a few of these vans in your neighborhood since prototypes have already rolled out in 16 US cities. Scarringe and his team have some serious legacy motor money in their pockets as well. In 2019, Ford invested over $500 million when they originally planned on using the Rivian chassis for their Lincoln brand. Recently, however, the company said that that specific collaboration was no longer a prospect. They do still have a cozy relationship though, with Ford holding a roughly 12% stake. Regardless of Ford's pivot, their $500 million along with the Bezos money played a huge role in getting both consumers and Wall Street buzzing about Rivian. But will all this hype translate to an actual challenge to Tesla's throne? Grimes' ex-husband has had an almost decade head start on Rivian. Is that as much of an advantage as it seems? Well, there are two big M's money and market share. After announcing their 100K delivery order from Hertz in October, Tesla's valuation surpassed $1 trillion for the first time. One trillion, one trillion? Really? They don't even have, they don't even have vents in their cars. You have to use the touchscreen, right? Like they don't have knobs. I say touchscreen for the entertainment stuff, knobs for climate control. I'm old school like that. Call me a boomer. Call me whatever you like. It's still the best. And Musk, all by himself, is worth more than ExxonMobil. They're the best-selling electric vehicle manufacturer in the world, claiming 15% of the market after selling close to 421,000 units in the first half of 2021. These numbers may be understandably daunting for anyone trying to compete with Elon, but in the rapidly changing world of EVs, there are several signs that Tesla's dominance could be waning. Every automaker has quality control issues, but they've plagued Tesla at a higher clip than most. Consumer Reports recently ranked Tesla's reliability and dependability 27th out of 28 manufacturers. Ugh. Their Model 3 got a score of 59 out of a possible 100. The Model S, Y, and X took an even worse shellacking, receiving scores of 20, 18, and 5, respectively. Good God. There have also been ongoing complaints about Tesla models being delivered to customers with gouges, scratches, peeling clear coat, or just dusty and dirty in general. Any car salesman will tell you that's heresy for a dealer to deliver a new car in anything other than immaculate condition. How long customers put up with these kinds of issues remains to be seen, but I gotta assume the clock is ticking, and Elon's probably feeling the pressure. Mr. Musk's increasingly unpredictable behavior over the past year hasn't helped the Tesla image either. Obviously, he isn't going broke anytime soon, but threatening to sell stock via Twitter and his brash attacks on Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren, for example, are alienating some of those diehard EV customers out there. I'm not gonna get political here, but talk about alienating your target audience. That's just a, that's, the, that's an own goal. Unforced error. I assume Tesla will be influencing the EV game for decades to come. And boy, it would take a lot for Musk to screw this up. But just because Tesla was the first one voted prom queen doesn't mean they'll wear the crown forever. Another reason for Rivian optimism and EV optimism in general is that even though only about 3% of vehicles sold in the US in 2020 were electric, there's only one direction that number is going. And it's not, as Fall Out Boy would say, down, down in an earlier round. I'll never apologize for Fallout Boy. Spurred on by the brutal Wall Street valuations we mentioned at the top, legacy automotive players are desperately dumping money into rebranding and reestablishing themselves in the EV market. Ford's decision to politely step back from direct collaboration with Rivian could be influenced by the fact that they have their own major horse in the race. In December, Ford CEO Jim Farley said that the company has received nearly 200,000 reservations for its electric pickup truck, the F-150 Lightning, which will arrive sometime in the middle of this year. Meanwhile, Toyota plans to invest $1.29 billion in a battery manufacturing plant in lovely North Carolina, which, when it gets rolling in 2025, could supply up to 1.2 million EVs per year. And Guten Tag Volkswagen has reported that they've sold a company record 300,000 electric vehicles this year, including 29,000 high-performance EVs. Can we get a clip of that launch? <laughs> oh my oh my God. God. <laughs> Thank you best car I've ever driven. The aforementioned Lucid has reported a surge in reservations, up to 17,000 vehicles since delivering their first cars to customers in late October. Their Air sedan was just named 2022 Motor Trend Car of the Year, which has helped the company rocket to become the eighth most valuable car manufacturer in the world. Wow. 
So what does all this non-stop action mean for Rivian in the coming months? Well, for what already promises to be an insane year because of their actual release, another thing to consider in 2022 is that it's sure to bring more worldwide government support to the industry at large. Here in the States, the $1.75 trillion Build Back Better Act passed by the House of Representatives not only includes tax incentives up to $12,500 per EV, but with the Senate potentially passing the bill within the month, there's a chance Rivian could also address some of the critics' most relevant concerns even quicker than expected. Beyond rural infrastructure needing to drastically improve, fingers crossed the BBB Act actually makes that happen, there has to be a focus on improving EV culture within, say, the farming and construction industries. There are legitimate concerns that EVs won't be able to handle the environmental and occupational unpredictability within these two major truck guide demographics, where it's going to take more than a pull-out camping stove to convince them it's worth making the switch to electric. The technology will get there, it'll be fine. With all this financial and industrial drama considered, it's impossible to know where we'll be even a year from now. But as it stands, if Rivian is able to navigate these first few baby steps into the treacherous gauntlet that is the auto industry, they could very well become the next EV Cinderella. More SUVs are bought in America than anywhere else in the world, and trucks and SUVs are two of the most profitable sectors of the industry. That means until we hear great things about the new Hummers or that freaking weird Tesla truck they rolled out a few years ago, Rivian seems to have the upper hand. According to Forbes, Rivian had $3.7 billion in cash and cash equivalents at the end of June which is a banger balance for a company that's just getting started with deliveries. And their current stock price is still hovering around 45% above its IPO price. And as of this recording, they're trading for roughly $110 a share. It'd be nasty. The agreement with Amazon also provides Rivian with a distinct funding advantage over other electric vehicle startups, as well as a leg up in terms of production potential. Additionally, EVs have turned Silicon Valley into a new age Detroit. 20 years ago, tech bros weren't exactly who you think of as the top demographic in the car guy pyramid, but that's kind of changed. All that San Francisco brain power and Bitcoin is sure to bring some interesting concepts in the coming years. And while investor interest in fledgling EV companies has historically been labeled as super risky, the last decade has proven that when you hit it in this game, you hit big. So everyone from your regular dude on E-Trade to the most conservative hedge funds on Wall Street are sure to become more and more open-minded about EVs. Like it or not, we're living in the Wild West stage of the EV lifespan, which is why Rivian is such an exciting prospect. Hair out of nowhere Musk may be the poster boy of this brave new world, but it's safe to say that along with the rest of us, Rivian has his attention. Hey you, you want to get buff this year? Well listen up, Pasta Arms. Donut just released the ultimate gym attire. And I'm here to show you how to get it workout ready. So pay attention. Step one. Buy this beautifully designed shirt for just $29.98. That's way less than $30. Step two. Get some scissors out of the drawer, the one that we all have in our kitchen. Step three. Carefully cut off the sleeves like so. You'll notice with each snip that this shirt is made from high quality cotton. Now doing this will help airflow as well as highlight your soon to be sculpted arms. So go to donutmedia.com and get all sweaty in this new Buff Horses shirt today. Thank you very much for watching Wheelhouse. Thank you to Rivian for lending us that R1T. That was really fun to drive. Very cool car. I mean, the sky's the limit for these companies. We'll see some succeed, we'll see some fail, we'll see some interesting stuff in the meantime, for sure. But in the coming weeks, we're gonna be talking about some cars that don't go but vroom, vroom. <laughs> they make noises. Uh, so stick around for that. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit that like button, all that good stuff. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes if you'd like. Be kind, I'll see you next time.